What's going on everybody? This is Jaden with How to Apple and I want to welcome you to the second episode of Apple Talks Tech where we're going to talk some real talk about WWDC and what exactly did Apple just do? So as I said before, here we are with episode number two of Apple Talks Tech. And if you're new to this channel, go ahead and subscribe, get involved with the tech videos, the live streams, the giveaways, everything that goes on in this channel, and just join the How to Apple fam. So in this episode, we're gonna be going over three main things, mainly WWDC that happened this week. Of course, we cannot let that mess slip by because there was a lot that actually happened and a lot was announced. Um, also, I wanna talk about my personal opinion on how I think WWDC broke YouTube and cause some problems for YouTube. Uh, but I also want to go over the community questions from last week, and we're gonna get into that stuff in this episode. And diving into WWDC, my gosh, I personally feel like Apple has, they brought it big, and I wanted them to bring it big because I was really worried that Apple was losing the hype. Everybody's talking about the OnePlus, and everybody's talking about Huawei, and everybody's talking about Google, and Samsung this. All these different things. I'm like, yo, Apple better bring it hard and they better do it right. Well, in my opinion, WWDC was exactly where it's at. Now, this is just a software. I mean, we're looking at the OSs with the operating systems and everything. I feel like Apple has really done themselves uh, not a favor, but they really brought the hype back because what <laughs> what operating system brings the hype that people, people don't get, how do you say this? People do not get this excited over a developer conference for any other company. I certainly haven't seen it. I mean, the stuff is always packed out. People are like blowing up the servers trying to watch it. Live streams are everywhere. Everybody tunes in to Apple's stuff. And it's like, yo, you know what? Apple still has the hype and I'm glad for that. But really, let's get into watch OS because that's like the first thing I wanna unpack. So I asked you guys on Instagram, what was the most exciting thing for you in the WWDC? And believe it or not, there was a lot of people that said watch OS. And I think that really, a lot, of course, the stuff that I said last week, it came true. Of course, I was sourcing it from somebody else. So it ain't like I found all the hacks and the leaks. Don't get, don't get it twisted. But between the built-in app store, um, the native apps that's coming to the, app, the Apple Watch, uh, the cycle tracking for women and stuff, you know, keep up with their body like they don't already. But anyway, that is what it is. Just helps them not have to worry about their health or not have to worry about their... Anyway, um, all that stuff really came true, and I, and of course the watch faces, we can't forget about the watch faces. Everybody's excited about the watch faces. Now, one thing I'm wondering is, are there gonna be watch faces that are specifically, would only be for the Apple Watch Series 4, that may not be on the Series 2 or Series 1, because I think the supported devices is Series 1 all the way to 4. So, are there different features that are on the 4 that's not gonna show up on the previous versions I don't know we'll find out I have an Apple Watch Series 3 so I guess we're gonna find out but uh, I'm pretty excited about the Apple Watch faces mainly about the App Store there's gonna be a local App Store on the Apple Watch and I think that's pretty cool because now you can download apps straight from your straight from your watch you don't have to load them to your phone and put them on your your Apple Watch all that kind of stuff it seems like there are they are slowly moving into uh, I guess the Apple Watch being its own device. And I think that's cool. I mean, you want it to be its own device to not have to have an iPhone. And maybe that might also be, you know, something too is now there are people that don't want iPhones, but they want an Apple Watch or they want a good fitness watch. And the Apple Watch, in my opinion, is by far the best smartwatch there is. So that's just another segue into Apple's iTunes and Apple's system, their ecosystem. They're still keeping that link for people that don't necessarily want an iPhone, but they want to keep, uh, you know, Apple or a good watch. That's just Apple keeping them on in, keep on sucking on. Anyway, so yeah, that's what I think about Apple Watch OS. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below and also in the live chat. And one more thing I can't help but mention. Now, I feel a little insecure because it seems like every device is listening to you and now that they have this new hearing you know hearing monitoring kind of thing with the Apple watch it'll tell you if your surrounding is loud and all that stuff like that and it says that Apple cannot they can't hear you it doesn't save your audio stuff like that but I really feel like the home pod your phone 
all these devices are really listening to you. Because like, listen, there have been times that I've hung out with my friend and I don't know if this is Apple, I don't know if this is Google, I don't know who this is, but there have been times that I hang out with my friend and I go on my phone and it's literally, every, when I go on social apps and stuff, he's the first one on the top. Or uh, if I'm talking about something, something that I don't never search on eBay, I don't never search online, nothing. I talk about it and next thing you know, I'm strolling through Instagram or something and I see an ad for exactly what I was talking about. And I'm like, yo, these devices are listening, in my opinion, all the time. I mean, just from saying the, hey, you know, the person for Apple, I can't say it, because my home pod will go off. Everything else might go off and start trying to figure out what I'm trying to say. But I'm like, yo, this is, I don't, I don't know how you guys feel. Do you guys feel comfortable? Do you guys feel secure that, that Apple or whatever, your devices are listening to everything you say to be able to pick up these, these uh, phrases that it needs to respond to or whatever? I wanna know what you guys feel about that. Let me know in the live chat and also in the comment section below because I'm like, yo, I don't know how I feel about it. But anyway, they're supposed to be helping your hearing, making sure you're not at loud places all the time. If it's getting loud, it'll let you know, hey, this is damaging your ears. Um, this is a little louder than normal. So, hey, that is what it is. I guess it's a pretty cool feature. But like I said, I don't really want them listening to me. So, I don't know how I feel about it. So let's jump into the most popular topic when it comes to WWDC, and that was iOS 13. Now, I'm gonna have to get my list out on this one because there was so much that was released with iOS 13. I'm like, yo, these guys are hitting hard. And I, like I said, I like it. I'm glad they're doing it. Um, this gives me a, a new hype for my phone. I don't have to get the new hype in getting a different phone. Just the new operating system brings hype. So, of course, they said that Face ID now is 30% faster. Um, I think that's cool. Like I said, I don't even notice Face ID anymore. I mean, it's like a layer of security that I, I really don't notice it because I'm always picking up my phone to look at it and it's like, boom, it's already open. So I do want them to make Face ID faster. If any of you guys remember when, when Touch ID, I think it was iPhone 6 to 6S, the, the Touch ID was dramatically faster. I mean, it was, it was a lot faster. So if Apple could do the same thing with Face ID, that'd be great, maybe make Face ID a little more accurate uh, because when I'm laying down, it doesn't really work all that well. Or if I try to put my face over it, sometimes it works if I don't wanna pick up my phone. Uh, but those are improvements that they can definitely do, whatever. But the speed, I'm excited about that. Um, the apps are like half the size, they say. With this, the updates are half the size. So that'll save you guys space on your phone. You don't have to feel like you're already running out of space or worried about space, whatever. I think they're really trying to maximize um, the iCloud space as well. Because, of course, I'm assuming that if the data, the app itself is smaller, maybe the data it, it uses and stuff that it backs up the iCloud is smaller. I don't know, maybe they're saving themselves money, <laughs> saving us money because it saves us on space. But uh, let's see what else there is. Uh, of course, dark mode. Now, we all been waiting on dark mode and every other app, Twitter, YouTube, all these apps have dark mode, but iOS didn't have a native dark mode. And I personally feel like dark mode is sick now. Like, I like dark, I like black, red, and white, those, that, com that color combination is awesome to me. So I'm pretty excited to see what's going on with it. I'm pretty excited to see how it's gonna look. Now, of course, I do have it on my YouTube demo phone, but honestly, I have not used it much because it's just my demo phone. I don't put betas on my personal phone just because <laughs> I just ain't trying to get somewhere and need an app and it don't work. Bump that. So if you guys are excited about dark mode, let me know in the comment below or in the live chat what you think if you've seen pictures of it. Maybe, if you, maybe you've already used it. Let me know what you guys think in the chat or in the comments below. And of course, I did make a video on how to turn on the dark mode. Um, I went through settings, but there actually is another way to turn it on right from your control center. If you swipe down and you see where you can change your brightness, you're gonna push on that or force touch, uh, haptic, whatever you wanna call it, long push, whatever. If you do that, it'll pull up and you can see on the bottom left-hand corner uh, a toggle button to turn on and off the dark mode. So they did make that easily accessible. Another cool thing Apple did was release the swipe keyboard, which they called it the quick path keyboard. And I'm, I guess, I guess they didn't want to call it swipe because I guess they wanted some form of originality, even though they're super late to the game. We've been wanting this, whatever. 
But I did use it and I feel like the iPhone screen is so smooth that it really makes it a pleasure to use. Like, I was kind of worried that it's gonna find other words and I still guess, I guess it still does not pick up slang words that we use. So I don't know if there's gonna be some, some form of predictive text when it comes to that, things that we normally use and it'll pick up. I don't know if they make the operating system that smart. I don't know. But I do think it's definitely a well-awaited thing that we've been waiting on for a while. So let me know what you guys think about the swipe keyboard, if you feel like you would use it or if you feel like you will text. When I did use it, I noticed that it was faster. And I've heard some people before say that typing is faster. So let me know what you guys think. Now let's talk about another thing that I use my phone for a lot, and that is music. Now, of course, with dark mode, it's gonna make your album arts look all cool and stuff like that. I'm really excited about that, I think that's pretty cool. And now they have the live uh, lyrics. So as you're listening to a song, it's gonna show those lyrics scrolling up. You don't have to necessarily follow along and scroll with your finger and all that stuff like that. It's gonna be right there on the screen. I think that's pretty cool. But the coolest thing, in my opinion, with Apple Music, or just whatever, iOS 13 when it comes to music is you can now share your music with another user that has AirPods. I think that's pretty cool. So now we can both listen to the same thing in our ears and it's like, wow, that's pretty cool. You don't have to worry about, you know, putting it on speaker, whatever. I think that's a pretty cool feature. Let me know what you guys think in the comments or in the live chat, wherever that stuff is. So let me know what you guys think. Now, while we're talking about music, let's not forget about the HomePod. Now they have this handoff feature where if I'm listening to something on my iPhone, I can walk close to my uh, HomePod and it will pass that music to it. And same when I leave. Now, I personally think that's a great idea. I think that's good. I'm finally glad they did that because I'm always having to toggle between the two. And sometimes my HomePod doesn't connect right. I don't, I don't even know. Sometimes I feel like I would leave my house and leave my HomePod running because I think automatically that, hey, if I pause it on my phone or whatever, it should pause, but that is not always the case. So if you're excited about that, let me know. I am pretty excited about the fact that you can hand off your music now with the HomePod, and I really hope they bring more functionality to the HomePod, but looks like they're definitely starting. Now let me know if you guys are excited about the new Memojis, and they allow you to customize these things so much more now to fit more of who you are. Also, they have these emoji packs that you can use your Memoji with. <laughs> so all the expressions that we use with yellow faces or whatever, I guess sometimes we use the little people or whatever, now you can put your own Memoji in it. And I think that is super sick. Now, I don't know if older iPhones are gonna be able to read it. I guess you have to have iOS 13 maybe to read it. I'm not sure, but I think that's pretty cool. Along with this new privacy wall that Apple has now. So where you don't have to put your email address or it doesn't share your email address in with these app developers or whatever, whoever owns that app. Now you can use Apple's little self-generated email and it will forward emails to your email. And you can always delete that email for that app if you ever need to. I think that's pretty cool. It just keeps your security a little higher, I guess. Uh, lets you dwell in obscurity a little more. So let me know what you guys think about those things. But again, I'm excited about Memoji and I really wanna start using it more because I guess more people are really getting People are getting uh, you know, more updated phones. And as Apple said, the latest version of iOS is, what, 85% adopted, I think 90%, something like that, adopted, while other Android devices or whatever, they don't have that, that adoption rate. So now it's, it's getting safe to use the emojis and the animojis and stuff without having to worry about question marks and all that kind of mess. So again, let me know what you guys think. Now that we've beat the iPhone and iOS 13 to death, let's talk about the iPad. And normally the iOS goes on the iPad as well, but now they have finally made an iPad OS. Completely separate from the other OS's, Mac OS and iOS, now you have the iPad OS. And I think this probably, in my opinion, is probably the biggest announcement at WWC DC because it really gives the identity to the iPad. It, We've always, well I know I have, I wasn't really sure if I like using the iPad, I think it's cool to watch YouTube on, watch Twitch on, whatever, but it never really had a place in my repertoire of Apple devices. Like I would either use my computer or I use my phone. And the iPad was kind of like, eh, whatever, I use a recipe book on it, but who would spend that much money just to do that? <coughs> anyway, whatever, I guess I did. But now with iPad OS, it really brings the identity to the iPad because it, it really, in my opinion, merges 
the iOS mobile, mobile, whatever you want to call it, all little features or whatever, with that more desktop class operating system. You can use a mouse, you can use uh, USB drives. The file system is starting to get a lot more like the Mac. Um, the browsing is full desktop class. So I'm pretty excited about iPad OS, and I think personally that is the biggest uh, update when it comes to app, when it comes to WWDC. So let me know what you guys think. If you feel like maybe you don't have an iPad, but if you are an iPad owner, let me know what you think in the live chat and in the comments below. Um, if you feel like you are you are going to be more excited about using your iPad now, I know I am because, like I said, it's making it more like a computer, and I think everybody really wants their iPad to, to replace their computer. It's like a mobile computer, uh, not necessarily a laptop, but I use my iMac and I wanna take my iPad wherever I, wherever I go, but it's just not, it just don't meet the expectations or it doesn't have the functionality. Well now I feel like the door is opening wide up and eventually what I really think is the MacBooks, you may never get away from the, you know, the normal MacBook, the laptop, but I really feel like Apple is going to let the iPad replace the MacBook as far as the, the, the flow of people. Now, you know, that is what it is. That's probably going to be in the future. But the more they make the iPad look like a computer, the more it's going to replace that mobile computer. So let me know your thoughts on that. And before we move on from the iPad OS, I want to know you guys' thoughts. So I want to get an Apple Pencil. And I think... You know, I've always thought, well, Apple Pencil, I don't really draw, I don't really write, even though I do write at work, but I just don't really see the need to get an Apple Pencil. But I'm starting to really see that the Apple Pencil is a lot more useful than just writing and drawing. People actually use it a lot just to navigate the iPad. So if you have an Apple Pencil, let me know in the comments below. Uh, yeah, you can let me know in the chat as well, but I definitely want you to leave a comment below on your real opinion of the Apple Pencil and if you think I should get one um, for usability, not necessarily to review on the channel, but if you think I should really get one because what, how much are they, like a hundred and something dollars? Let me know what you guys think because I really want to know true users. I want to know your opinion if you really feel like it's worth it or if you feel like you should just use your finger or even now a mouse. So, yeah. So leaving the mobile devices and jumping into the full-fledged computers, Mac OS Catalina 10.15, I think it's pretty cool. Now, personally, I was always on High Sierra. I just now updated to Mojave because I needed it to get iOS 13 <laughs> and to get Xcode to betas and stuff. So I'm still kind of fresh with Mojave, the dark mode, all this stuff like that. I know you guys have already done that. Most of you probably have, but like I said, I was just behind the times because I didn't want to ruin my League of Legends. I also didn't want to run into any kind of incompatibilities when it comes to my program. Running my YouTube channel, I just did not have time for that mess. I needed to keep my workflow right, whatever. But Catalina, of course it does away with iTunes now and it brings the music app, it brings podcasts, it brings TV. So again, if you guys are trying to update your iPhone or anything like that and upgrade to iOS 13, and you're looking in iTunes or music, whatever, uh, you're looking for your iOS device, it's not gonna be there. Now it moved to Finder. So you can go into Finder and actually look up, you know, all the restore options and update options and stuff for your iPhone now. So keep that in mind. Now one thing I'm pretty interested in that I was never really interested in before, and that is podcasts. Now I think the desktop app is gonna bring a little more life to that. And I've never really been into podcasts up until I started listening to my friend Inyaki. Uh, his stuff is pretty cool to me, so it kind of made me start listening to podcasts more. And now I started noticing that I listen to YouTube videos just the audio. So I'm not sure if I think there really is a space for podcasts. And maybe it's bigger than I think. Maybe it's I'm just kind of been out of the loop. I don't know. So if you guys know any podcast channels that you think are pretty cool, link them in the uh, description below so that way I can check them out. Not a description. <laughs> link them in the comments below so I can check them out for sure. So, yeah, let me know what you think about podcasts. Maybe what the future of podcast is. Whatever. Let me know. So as I mentioned in last week's episode, they did bring screen time to the Mac. So now you're gonna be able to manage all your devices, people in your family plan, uh, your Apple family plan or whatever. So let me know what you guys think about that. I personally think it's a good thing because I think parents need control over these devices. Kids are running off doing whatever they wanna do on their, their iPhones and their phones and parents have no clue what in the world's going on. Like, 
<laughs> no clue at all and you guys know that so i think this gives a little more control maybe makes it a little more easier less intimidating security or whatever for your devices um a little more parental control over their kids and just the family plan in general or whatever so let me know what you guys think in the comments or in the live chat hit me up so another new feature that i really like about mac os that they're releasing is the find my now of course <laughs> they had find my iphone find my ipad find my mac all that stuff and it was kind of hard to not necessarily distinguish, but you it just sounds weird to say, oh, go log on to find my iPhone when you're trying to look for your Mac. So I guess it just took the device name off now, and now it's just find mine. So what I mainly like about it is if you have a laptop that's not connected to the internet, you lose a location. But now that you have other iPhones and Apple devices around it, there's like a pulsating whatever, a signal that's being given from your MacBook that will actually show where it is. It'll connect those people around you. And it would be mighty funny if somebody that stole your MacBook has all Apple stuff and their Apple stuff rats them out on where they are. That'd be pretty funny. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about that if you feel like this is a, and of course, it's supposed to be encrypted. You don't even really know it's happening, but you could be helping somebody else find their iPad if you walk by it. So I think it's a cool feature. What do you guys think? Comments below, live chat, you know the deal. Now, another cool thing they talked about in WWDC was not just software, but of course, they let out some hardware too. And I got a little leak that somebody got a Mac Pro already. So check this video out. And yes, as you guys just witnessed, that is all of the $6,000 cheese grater glory right there straight from tim cook apparently allegedly straight from tim cook so hit him up if you're trying to get your own mac pro early six thousand dollars all you gotta do is drop it you might even better go more than that because you know of course you can fit now uh 1.5 terabytes of ram in that thing and while grating your cheese at high speed <laughs> now nah, but as you know there has been a lot of talk going around about how this new mac pro looks like a cheese grater so if you ever see cheese, if you ever see a grater and you see apple or whatever, you know it's talking about the Mac Pro. Now I personally think it doesn't, it's, I don't really like the design. Um, I like the old retro, you know, Mac Pro look the way it had before. I guess they're trying to look like that, but more updated, whatever. I don't personally like it, but the specs are beast. When you can fit 1.5 terabytes of RAM into a computer, what in the world do you need that much RAM for? Other than designing the human body and designing the human eye, maybe. But like, come on, that is a lot. That's a lot of, that's a lot of RAM. That's a lot of RAM. And of course, this machine does not just grade cheese good. It'll grate your wallet good too because it's gonna cost you over $6,000 to get this device, to get this computer, whatever you wanna call it. And also they released the monitor and stand that just the stand itself cost a thousand dollars. Just the monitor stand. I still have not been able to fathom that. I have not been able to understand what in the world. We just gonna move on. Now jumping into the community question and answer segment of this episode. I want to talk about last week's question, which was what do you think Trump and the government should do about the Huawei ban? Do you think they should open it up and allow the, you know, us to continue to do business so that way it doesn't shut the company down when it comes to cell phones? All these people that have these Huawei devices in America can still, matter of fact, everywhere can still get updates from Google. Or if you think they should ban it, if you think, you know, Trump's doing the right thing, the executive order is addressing the right problems and so forth. We, I reached out to you guys to see what you guys thought. So let's look at some of you guys' answers. Now, JC32 Gaming said, I think he should ban. And of course, I agree with that because it is national security. Now I'm gonna add on the next answer to that as well because they pretty much say the same thing. Uh, Dark Knight 52820, which we know is Dylan, <laughs> says, I think that he needs to ban them because of the security of the government. Yes, I understand that people have those phones, but they need to ban, they need to be banned from the US. And I agree with that because it is a national security issue. Now, of course, people have the phones, it wouldn't be the first money you ever wasted. But anyway, if you're gonna be giving away government uh, intellectual property or whatever, you need to be banned from America. I'm sorry. 
And actually, China, there's certain companies with China that the government has already been talking about and we can't buy we can't buy certain technology from them anyway. And that's been going on for like a year already, probably two years already. So it's just now being public. And I think the executive order actually gave a list of companies. I don't know if we necessarily had a list before, but hey, it is what it is. That's what you guys thought. So there was no opposing opinions to that. So that's what we're gonna think. Hey, Trump needs to ban. If you're mad about it, O's to the whale. So that was last week's community question. This week's community question is, do you think now is a good time to leave Apple? And do you think the people that have left Apple and ventured out to other technology, do you think they're looking back at WWDC and being like, man, I should have stayed. Apple, I already want to come back. Do you feel like they're going to regret their decision? So let me know. And if you have switched over to another device, let me know what you think. Also, you might as well go ahead and add this too. If you are a non-Apple user, does looking at WWDC make you want to get Apple? So I guess there's three questions in that. One, do you think people are gonna regret moving away from Apple? Or do you think it's the night, right time to do so? Two, if you have moved over, do you regret it? Three, if you don't have Apple, does, WD, does WWDC make you want to get Apple? So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm going to be going through them in the next episode, giving shout outs. Of course, it's a self shout out, whatever. So I need some engagement from you guys. So definitely leave it in the comments below and we'll go over it next week. So guys, that wraps it up for episode number two of Apple Talks Tech. And if you're new here, subscribe to the channel. Join the Hot Apple fam. If you're already a part of the Hot Apple fam, give this video a like, comment below. You know the deal so you can learn how to Apple without the E.